Welcome back to another episode of our Supercar Killer M3 presented by Turn 14 Distribution. With all the heavy lifting done, we still have a laundry list of things to do. We are back at the shop and once again, big thanks to Envy Auto for all that hard work Vin put a ton of time into making this thing look badass and it's gonna perform just as well. However, as I mentioned, we have a full list of things that need to get done. And the first thing we're gonna be starting off with is actually taking a lot of these parts off because we're gonna send them off to our buddies over at Stripping Tech. I wanna make sure to get a lot of this powder coated so it looks really nice it has like a, a colored theme in this engine bay so i think it is time we start stripping stuff I feel like we're moving backwards here. We've stripped stuff off and we should be assembling stuff, but this is for a good cause. So as you can see, all of this is off to powder coat now. Boy, do I love how the front end of this BMW comes off. It's just so easy and simple. And of course, now we have our whole timing system exposed. And uh, if some of you recall, we had quite the battle getting this crank pulley off. But look at this. Oh, 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 it's stuck. I, I'm, I'm gonna get it off. I'm gonna get it off here. It is off. And uh, in case you're wondering how to do this, well, let's cut to a scene when we were at NV Auto because that's how ultimately this came off. As you guys will recall, Pete and I failed to do that when it was on the cart on the floor of our shop. Figured now that it's in the chassis, we get more leverage on it, we're gonna give it a try. Plus these guys have experience with two J's and getting these off. So uh, let's watch the pros and see if they struggle as hard as Pete and I did with this job. No pressure, Ben. There you go. Oh, one shot? Come on, man! Wow, we was... spent half a day That's fighting because with we, that. We, we prepped it for them, we, we cracked did. We it. Did. I remember how I we said did. it moved a little DP, so... Still, I, it just goes to show having it in the chassis where you can really get leverage on it made all the difference. because problem, it's finger tight. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we, we probably cracked it loose Can we explain to everybody how we did that there? Because I, I think people, people are going to be curious. Brand new. Look at this thing. What's going on? Said this was short. We thought he was gonna need a 20 foot breaker bar. <laughs> all I can say is we loosen it for you, Ben. Basically, so, all you gotta do is just, you just gotta stop the flywheel from turning. Yeah, which we were doing so, at the uh, shop. So you guys put a pry bar in there. Okay. Yeah. And then we use that as a leverage, and then you use a big breaker bar, and then that's it. I'm convinced the reason why this came off at Envy Auto is because the engine was in place. When we had it on the stand, it was just rocking. There was no way to get good leverage. and. Let's face it, those boys are professionals, they know what they're doing. And they also recommended to us to replace this crank pulley because uh, it does separate. It's a two-piece design and these get, oh, they wear out in time and then this will fall apart and cause some serious damage. So what we have done is we've turned to Dorman who make an OEM replacement. So this will be half the fraction or a fraction of the cost of an OEM unit. It's gonna function just as well. So. We're going to install this in a minute when we start putting everything back together. However, what we're going to start off with is we need to make sure that this engine is at top dead center. And then we're going to address the issue of the VVTi cam gear here. As you can see, there's a bunch of oil leaking right here, which is why this whole front cover is so destroyed and nasty. We do have a replacement, but there's a seal in here that leaks. So we're going to start off by replacing that. With the lower timing cover off, 
I am just lining up the marks here right now. So there we go. Oh, just a little bit too far, but as you can see, these two lines line up with the mark up here, the little indentation there. And down here, we've got a dot that lines up with the mark on the main crank pulley here. So with that done, I think for this, we just loosen these bolts and this whole uh, VVT gear should come out. Looks like I got ahead of myself. I thought this was gonna be super easy that you just need to remove these five 10 mil bolts. However, you do need to remove this Allen bolt right in the middle of the VVTi gear. And for that, you're gonna need a size 14 Allen socket. And I assume a gun is gonna do the job here. So let's see what happens, guys. Oh yeah. Man, that's so good. Milwaukee works, oh, DP. <laughs> It's like an Allen underneath an, an Allen. Allen inside an Allen. May, do we need to remove that one? I think we must. It's a Russian doll or a cam gear. Wow. So it looks like we don't actually have to remove that Allen head bolt. This, that holds the actual cam gear in place onto the camshaft. So I've removed those 10 mils and there we go. Look at that. Now there is, a, see, I feel there's a certain way that this comes off and on. So I can feel it turning yeah. so maybe i need to mark this dp before i take it off i will mark it right here i've already marked it here so i'm is that enough what do you think i don't know yeah better safe than sorry i'd give it a serious mark. mark here yeah, there's probably a factory marker mark on the inside or something but maybe i guess we'll see we're gonna, safe we're, we're gonna find out here that's right so we want to make sure that this goes back together i suspect it's on a gear of sorts. I can feel it. See yeah. as it's coming off, it's yeah. turns. You see it turns? Yeah. So Same as the BMW stuff. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Wow. Okay. This is the likely reason why this rubber seal was leaking. And that's because it's not rubber anymore. As you can see, it's like a hard plastic just coming off like that. Wow. Check that out. So um, I'm just going to get this done and then I'll show you where or what we have for a new one. I've gone ahead and cleaned up the mating surface. That old gasket on there was so rock hard I had to use a little bit of the scotch bright on here. So the surface is nice and clean and this is what a proper seal is supposed to look like. See that stretchy soft. Uh, I sourced this off of eBay. I'll make sure to provide the link in the description. They're pretty cheap. They came quick and I've already put one on there as you can see just like so are they viton piece i think they are yeah yeah i'm pretty sure they are viton a one large tooth here so i don't think you can mess this up so this should just go on as such if i can get it to click on there i think like that there we are i think we are in i'm now torquing these 10 mils to you guessed it 10 foot pounds. I forgot to mention, there's a hot topic and a lot of debate about whether you should be actually replacing that seal on this VVTi cam gear. Some people say you shouldn't. In the manual it says just replace the whole gear because when you put it back together, you might not be able to align it properly and that's gonna throw your timing off. Um, the way I did it is I just based it off of the mark at this hole right here so I could see where it was and I just aligned it perfectly back there bolted on so theoretically that means this cam gear is in the exact same spot when i took it apart so who knows post in the comments let us know what you think are we screwing ourselves because we took this apart or is this something that most people do we don't know because we're not toyota experts anyways moving on we're gonna take off the timing belt tensioner here and this should allow us to take the timing belt off And Dave, can I just say, look at the simplicity of this timing belt. I, I think this is one of the simplest belts that uh, I've ever had to service. There is one actual pulley here. The rest is just the gears and the, uh, the crankshaft. And look at that, it comes right off. Oh, I might have to take this little thing off of here. All right, and there it is. So. Let's have a quick inspection. As you can see, lots of oil on this belt, but it 
doesn't look to be cracked or anything, so it's actually not in terrible shape. Nevertheless, we're replacing this. It's now time to clean up this oily mess, and I wanted to give you a quick little plug on the brake clean that I use, which is Napa CRC Brake Clean. It's non-chlorinated, which is the uh, lesser of two evils. The chlorinated stuff is actually pretty bad for you. So, and I find this actually works incredibly well in terms of getting all the grime off of here. Uh, and check out this. So this is the latest and greatest towel that I've been using. It's the Crew 600. And what makes this different than most shop towels is the texture on it. I, I really like this because it grips a lot more um, dirt and oil up versus the other stuff, which can kind of like spread it out. So those two things in combination here with a brush are gonna make this look as good as new. Now that we've got this area all cleaned up, it is time to replace the water pump. That's also a very important item to make sure you service right now. As you can see, it's easy to get to. And here's a funny thing. ASIN is the company that makes these water pumps for Toyota. You can buy these off of Rock Auto as I did. And as you can see, it says ASIN on it. What it doesn't say is Toyota because it's been scratched off here. But you know, this is an OEM Toyota product. So we're gonna replace this. And at the same time, before we get to putting the timing belt back on, we're gonna replace the uh, crank trigger sensor and that is because these tend to go bad on these two J's. So now's the time to do it. This is however a OEM genuine Toyota product. And just like that, our water pump is on. And I've got to show you my new cordless Milwaukee die grinder. This has quickly become my favorite tool. Normally die grinders just, they have a bulky feel to them because they have got air running to them. And as you saw right there, this thing is just like easy to get into areas, work it so well. And it is variable speed too. So you can set it from 10,000, 15,000, 20 to, to almost 25 and obviously it also has different speeds so as you ramp up it goes faster so such a great tool definitely put it on the wish list if you're looking for something like this for our timing belt we are going with a tome one this is a high performance belt from them and the reason why we're going with it is the material that they use makes it more resistant to fluids so oil and stuff will not kind of permeate into it it also is resistant to heat and stretching. So you've got a longer lasting belt. And what I really like is they use some fabric over the rubber, which actually quiets this belt down and makes it longer lasting. So all in all, a good upgrade. Another wear item that we'll be replacing is the tensioner pulley. There's a lot of talk online to upgrade this to a billet one. So if you're making like really, really high horsepower, you're gonna be bouncing the rev limiter and whatnot. Uh, there are companies that make billet pieces out of this, so you can upgrade it. Uh, these are still cast, they're from Toyota. I ended up buying an NSK one, and I'm confident that this is gonna hold. I don't think we're gonna be getting too extreme with this engine setup to, uh, to have to warrant a billet pulley. And this will go in just like this here. So I goofed there a bit. I think you want to do what you want to do is put this tensioner pulley on before you put the belt on. It went together much easier, but as you can see, everything's ready to go. So last thing is a new tensioner. Again, NTN, the OEM manufacturer using that. Bought this at Rock Auto, probably a third of the price as uh, what you would pay at Toyota. So let's get this in place and let's get these bolts in here. Now that we've got everything in place, it's time to pull that satisfying pin out. And there it is. We have tension on our belt. What we want to do though is we're going to want to rotate this around just to be sure that everything is in working order and our timing marks line up again. So we're going to do this twice and then we'll confirm we're good to go. And there you have it. Marks are lined up. We're good to go. So it is time to assemble this thing back together again and check out that fancy new timing belt cover that we got from Toyota.
Now that we've got everything together, I've got a question for you guys, and that is, what engine cover should I be running? Here is the factory Toyota one. As you can see, it's missing the whole piece here, and that's because we've got a ignition system that we're gonna be running that you can't use this. And uh, that's what it would look like. I'm thinking of getting this painted black. The valve covers are gonna be black, so it's all gonna be very matchy-matchy. However, my other option is this which is a clear cover. And I particularly like this because obviously you get to see the timing belt and the condition and if there's any oil happening. Um, also, it's somewhat of a different look. I don't know, that might be something I'm, I'm into. So let me know in the comments what you think. Obviously, we're, we haven't put the engine together, so it's kind of hard to, to picture it. But in the meantime, what should I be doing? Picture this as black or should I be going clear? All our parts are back from powder coat at stripping tech and man they did a fantastic job on these check out the nice color on this and this is not powder coat this is actually Cerakote, which is a material that actually rejects heat so there's an actual purpose to this we did all of the intake manifold in this color and we did the hard piping in uh, in the same gray so I'm excited to get this bolted on. Our antique manifold is in place, and I've got to say, it does look pretty good, doesn't it, DP? It looks great, yeah. And Although you left that one bracket there that connects the this. Yeah, we could have no, we could have done something no, about no, that no, bracket, no. PT. Everything else looks so good. You still got to make it look a little bit used, right? <laughs> you don't want it looking too new. I'll paint you're, that later. <laughs> you're right. I should have. Um, so we're moving on to the valve cover, and once again, JP over at Stripping Tech took care of us. I went gloss black. I think that's a, a good look for this car. Classy. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the nice thing is JP made sure to clean all of the inside. If you're uh, using a powder coater, always, always tell them to make sure to clean and, and blast, not sand blast or walnut blast or whatever it is, but water blast inside of the areas underneath uh, the, what, what is this called baffle? again? The baffle, yeah. Because if you get sand up in that area and then you run your motor, bad things can happen. So JP took does that very well. So let's get these things bolted on. I think they're gonna look pretty dang good. Just as Pete mentioned on the intake side, we had JP at Stripping Tech uh, coat all of the manifolds, both the intake and exhaust in that Cerakote stuff. On the exhaust side, however, we used the, uh, the opposite, I guess you could say, of what we used on the intake side. This coating is designed to trap heat inside the manifold, and we also coated the downpipe in the same stuff. So. You could kind of think of it as like a uh, a spray-on heat wrap. Is that kind of what it's like, Pete? I think it's meant to I trap heat so, in there yeah. and yeah. prevent heat from radiating into the engine bay. So you want that exhaust heat to go out the exhaust pipe. So that's what this is designed to do. And boy, it does look really nice, doesn't it? It's got a very cool, like almost like a machine finish to it. It, it just looks neat. I think it's originally designed for like the gun industry. So it's got that uh, I don't know that that gunish look to it. So. We do have a couple issues though. Uh, one is that this manifold, when you put it on the engine, the, uh, the back four lower studs here all interfere with the flange. So we're gonna have to cut these down by about half an inch to allow us to get hardware onto the studs. And the gasket, strangely on this thing, is a two-piecer. So we ordered this one from Worldpack locally and when we got it we thought, uh, what about the other one? Yeah. They don't have that one in stock. We've called all over town. Nobody has it in stock. So no one in the country has it in no stock. No one in the country so has it in stock. we got to order so from the U.S. Come from California via our friends down the road at Red Hill Toyota. So, yeah, we're going to uh, plop the one gasket on, put the manifold on, and install the rest of the turbo system. And then I guess we, we want to show you how good, this all, how good all this stuff looks. And then when we get the other manifold, or sorry, the other gasket, we'll plop it in there and we'll really be ready to go. So... In order to cut these studs, what I'm doing is just doubling up on the nuts here to get, this is kind of the thickness of our flange on our exhaust manifold, and that's the nut that goes onto it. So what I'm gonna do here is use the cordless Milwaukee die grinder coming in clutch again. Lots of room here to get at it. So let's start grinding and see what happens here, people.
So what do you guys think? I'm thinking it is starting to look like a real engine again. I, as you may have noticed, we've replaced the yellow filter with the blue, which matches the timing belt. And I'm still leaning towards using the clear timing belt cover. I think it's gonna look pretty good versus getting this one painted black and then this would just be all black. So I don't know. Again, post in the comments. And I think this is as far as we're gonna get today because unfortunately we're missing that gasket. We actually have a a blanket coming for the turbo on the uh, the hot side and I think there's a couple of small other little gaskets here and there that we need to put this all back together and then we can get the front end on so I think I'm going to wrap this one right here if you like this video definitely give me a thumbs up and uh, if you're liking our content why not think about subscribing a lot of you don't subscribe so if you do please do so and make sure to check out the links in the description because they have all of the products that were used in this video